Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is my 2020 Tenere 700 that I bought in November of last year. And since then, I've customized it, I've modeled it, I've ridden it off-road, on-road, toured with it, city riding. I've dropped it many, many, many times. But I'm gonna share with you my thoughts and my experiences coming from a not so off-road orientated background in hopes to help you decide if this is the right machine for you. So why the T7, you ask? <laughs> I was asked this so many times when I bought this. I think um, you guys were actually shocked <laughs> that I decided to just pull the trigger on a T7. Like, I love my Street Scrambler. I'll keep it always. I love it to death. I just didn't want to destroy it. I was destroying it every time I'd head out on a moto camp or an adventure, which was happening every two weeks. I love the bike. It does have its limits though. It's a Street Scrambler. It doesn't have the clearance. The tires aren't as big. The suspension isn't set up as, as well as this. And when you load it up, you can feel the weight. You can feel how heavy it is when you're fully laden. It's definitely noticeable and it's not really made for hardcore adventure riding. Don't get me wrong, it can do a lot of things. You can still take it off-road and have a good time with it, but I needed something that was a bit more suited to the style of riding that I was starting to experiment with that wasn't gonna cost me a whole bunch of money every time I dropped it. So the next heap of questions that came through were, why didn't I buy the Norton 901? Why don't I buy the Triumph Scrambler 1200? Why don't I buy Whatever. And my answer is pretty simple. Since they dropped in 2019, they just, they were a blip on my radar. I just liked the look of them. And then as time went on, I started learning how capable they were at luggage options, at touring, at adventure riding, and then seeing weapons like pole terrace, just tearing these things, making these things look like they weigh 10 kilos. Just seeing the potential that these things have, from these pros riding them, I was a, a no-brainer. And then also hearing how well these things sound. I'm all about the sound. I love that 270 degree crank. The scrambler's got it, this has got it. It just sounds awesome. It gets my heart pumping. I enjoy the feeling of it. That is why I bought the T7. So the service intervals on this are fine. It's like five to 10,000 Ks. Super easy to do. Drop the bash plate, the oil filter is right behind the bash plate. 10, 15 minutes, you're gonna have the oil done, bash plate back on and you back on the road again. It's a very simple machine. There's not a lot of electronics going on. They're not a hard bike to work on. And I feel like with the most basic tools, you can, you can do quite a lot, which is a massive plus. Customizing, super easy as well. These plastics come off in no time. They're very well designed. Once you take these plastic covers off, you have so much space in there to run wires and run all your stuff and do whatever you need to do. And parts aren't that expensive. When I dropped the scrambler and I snapped the shift shaft, I had to wait a few weeks for the part to come over from the UK and then had to get it fitted and everything. With this, it's, it's Yamaha. So the parts are available everywhere. Parts are way cheaper. But in saying that, after all the amount of times that I have dropped this thing, I've not actually broken anything on it. So for size, I'm five foot 10 and I weigh roughly 75 kilos-ish. And this is how the bike looks to me. Comes up to about here, just below my hip. So when getting on it, yeah, it, it can be, depending how flexible I'm feeling during the day, you can, yeah. <laughs> Swing your leg over like that. It is, it is high. <laughs> like it is definitely high, especially in the scrambler. And the back end kicks up just that little bit. So you might clip your knee over and then, and then you can get on. Or just do it the, the adventure style and just stand up on the foot peg and then away you go. So now we're in the upright position, both feet are on the ground. And this is how it is for me. My heels are slightly elevated. I prefer to be flat foot on both sides and I contemplated whether to do the lowering link on the rear suspension. I was advised by the pro riders to just learn with it at the stock height. Like it isn't that much higher, I guess, you know. Um, if I was any shorter, then yeah, I definitely would lower it 100%. Just to build your confidence up, it doesn't feel so big and scary. It is, like it is a big bike. And then if I'm at traffic lights or something, I'll just lean it over a little bit. I'll always have one, one foot up on, the, on a peg. And like, this is me standing. So there's not much difference between that and that, you know. Riding this thing on the highway is a dream. I mean, riding this thing on the road in general is a dream. <laughs> it feels so nice. But on the highway in particular, wind protection, the windshield here protects the wind from your chest. Usually when you go camping, you rock up to your campsite. The hardest part of the day is over, which is the ride. And you can relax. Once you've set up your camp and everything, you can just chill out. For me, when I rock up to my campsite, that's where my work begins. The trail riding, as you know, as exerting as it is, it isn't as much as what I'm doing when I'm running around with the camera at the campsite, trying to film as much as I can. So conserving energy is a big thing for me. And on the scrambler, not having a windshield and riding the freeway, if you've got headwind hitting you, using the energy, you're gonna get fatigued. 
This works amazingly, it keeps the wind off your chest. It does deflect the wind into your helmet a bit though, so you still get a bit of a head wobble. And I know a few of you guys have actually reached out asking if there's a way to sort of fix that. And the only way that I can suggest is by picking up one of these little slider things. I forget the brand of these ones, but I feel like you can sort of buy them like off Amazon and stuff. It's a super simple system, super simple system. You just raise the, the shield up and then that deflects it off your face. You can't feel the wind on your face. You could probably feel a little bit on the top of your helmet there. The stance is very neutral. I feel extremely comfortable when riding this. I can ride this for hours without any sort of aching or pains or anything. I find the seat actually quite comfortable. I wouldn't really suggest changing it. I know some people do, but each to their own. I have changed the bars and these are a bit more aggressive. I'm leaning a little bit more forward. Um, these are the fat bar. And by the way, guys, if you haven't seen my custom build videos, I'll link them at the end of this video. So go and check it out if you would like a detailed overview on what I've done to my T7. I've never felt limited by its power on or off road, but in saying this, I don't come from a sports bike background. This is fast enough for me. The street scramble is 55 horsepower. The T7's 74. So this is quicker than the Street Scrambler. It's a nice linear output from low revs up to high revs. You just have that consistent, nice pull in six gear. If you're cruising on the freeway, you can open it up. You're gonna pull away. I think it's a great amount of power. It's nice and balanced um, anymore. And I'd feel like you probably struggle to get some grip on the terrain when you're off-road. The very first time I've sort of felt its power, I was launching it off the lights, hit second gear, front wheel just came up straight away. <laughs> And it was, you know, that was a scary moment, especially being in traffic with people. And I think I was darting across a lane as well. And I was, I was just, who was I? I was just, I was just a madman. Damn madman. T7 vibes though. She's got a lot of sauce. Fuel economy for touring. I haven't run out of fuel. <laughs> the thing that I felt was a bit funny with this is that when the fuel light comes on, it doesn't tell you how many Ks you have left. It starts counting up the Ks. So it shows you how many Ks you're doing once the fuel light starts flashing. And Josh JB, he actually did a cool little video with him running the T7 completely out of fuel and how many Ks he got out of the tank. I'll link it down below as well, check it out. Surprisingly, he got, how many Ks was it? 100, it was like 104 kilometers once the fuel light went on. And then overall, he got like 360 Ks out of a tank. Some people say you can push 400 if you're riding it like a real conservative person. And I mean like, that's probably like good conditions as well. The wind's behind you not too much resistance. But for me, yeah, I'm probably getting around 300 Ks out of the standard tank. There are different tanks that you can get for these as well. The Safari tank, they've got a 25 liter. I think they're just releasing a 45 liter, which is huge. That is, that's, that's crazy. You wouldn't want to be going off-road too much with that size tank. But if you're doing long tours, especially here in Australia, we have long stretches without petrol stations for hundreds of kilometers. That'd be the most perfect setup. Otherwise, you take a fuel bladder or fuel canisters, whatever you want. The standard take is 16 liters. So yeah, you can, you can expect around 300 Ks out of a tank. The very first time I loaded this up with my gear on, I didn't have any luggage racks or anything. I just had it stacked on the back seat. I took it through a burn around some twisties and I couldn't, I couldn't tell that it had all the gear on the back. I was so surprised. I had the biggest smile on my face and I was just letting it rip. Had the best time. With the Scrambler, same amount of luggage on the back and it's, it's a dive, all the enjoyment's gone. <laughs> you just feel so heavy and so cumbersome, but this just handles it so well. You've got your adjustable preload as well under for the rear monoshock, just under here, arms reach, you can just quickly screw that in or screw it out, depending on how stiff or soft you want the rear suspension. There are so many different luggage options as well, which is what I love about this also. City riding for the T7, I choose not to ride this in the city. I have, but I've just felt that it's just a bit too just big and, cumbersome when you're trying to, you know, park and I don't know. It's For me, I take the scrambler. That's what that's for. I can fit that in tighter spots. I can maneuver it a little bit easier. I feel like if you're tall, if you're six foot, I feel like six foot's the perfect size for this. Then yeah, I definitely would. Or if I had it lowered, I'd, I'd ride it into the city more. But just in terms of just being able to quickly maneuver around and stuff like that, I just take the scrambler. Road stuff out of the way. Let's talk about taking this thing off-road. Before we do that, I feel like I need to just explain my history riding off-road. So since I started YouTube, you guys have been along every step of the way with my off-roading journey. The very first time I went off-road is when I took my street scramble off-road, when I was completely stuck. Hadn't done a thing to it. Once I built the scrambler up and everything, I thought I need a practice bike, one that I can just keep dropping all the time and have a bit of fun with. And that's when I bought the WR450. Took that on the trails a little bit, did some wheelies, did some stupid stuff, and then COVID kicked in, had to sell the bike, didn't really get to use it that much more. 
and then I moved to Melbourne. Did some light off-roading with the Scrambler. I didn't want to go too hard because I just didn't want to drop and damage it. And then I bought the T7. I feel like we've all seen Paul Terrace's Seeker short films. If you haven't, I'll link in the description. He just released a new one the other week, number three. And you know, we've seen what he can do on these. And if you haven't, you will soon. It makes it look like it weighs 10 kilos. Well, I'm here to tell you that it just absolutely does not weigh 10 kilos. It is massive bike. When you first take it off road, it feels like a trail bike. You, when you, you know, you're feeling a kick out a little bit, like this is fun and it sounds like, it feels like a trail bike, you've got the beautiful sounding exhaust and it does feel light. When you start getting to the, the technical stuff, that's when you feel that this is not a trail bike. It is in fact a full on adventure motorcycle that is extremely heavy. Right, once you get it past about here and you're on it, probably even a little bit less, about there, that's it, you're gonna, you're gonna drop it. <laughs> it doesn't take much. It is extremely top heavy. I've dropped this countless times. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've dropped this. And I feel like the majority of T7 owners that don't have a really good off-roading background, they expect it to be as light and as nimble as all these pro riders make it look. But in reality, it's, it's not. It's such a, it's such a pig. I, I call it a pig. <laughs> you need to put the hours in. You need to head out every week. You need to do drills. You need to practice. You need to practice so, so much. You need to keep on dropping it. Try new things. You drop it again. As bad as it sounds, that's what you need to do. Or buy yourself a smaller trail bike that you can just throw on the trailer and practice on that first before trying things on this, which is something that I should do. Instead, I did some ADV courses, some adventure riding courses with Safe to Ride with Paul. Paul's awesome. If you're in Melbourne and you want to expand your adventure riding, it's a game changer. Every time I ride this thing and I learn something more and I put in the time, I just, you feel it, you know? You feel it's there and you know the potential that this bike has and I'm nowhere near what its limit is. It has so much more to go and I'm excited to, to keep pushing myself to get there. I did push myself a little too hard though, so my whole wrist issue, the last time I rode this, which was about eight weeks ago, I was practicing my stand-up wheelies and I was on hard pack, and when I gave it some, the back end kicked out a little bit. I had it up and full lock handlebars, and so when I landed, I just went straight into the ground at speed, scratched all this up. It was almost like ash felt with a layer of dust, ripped all the rubbery stuff off the exhaust, there's a big ding there. You know, it was, it was chaotic, but the worst thing was is that when I landed, I put my hand out to save my face, that must have bent back so far. That took all the impact and then bruises and cuts all on my shoulder and everything. And I was fully geared up as well. You know, you, you put in the time, you push your limits and you know, this happens. But I mean, all the pro riders out there have, have been in the same thing. So it depends how far you wanna go. The more you put into the bike practicing, the more you get out of it, but expect to drop it. You're gonna drop it 100%. It doesn't take much to drop. And it's, you're better off letting it go so you don't injure yourself. Now when picking it up, I don't really do the whole the whole like, you know, back lifting, picking up thing. I use the handlebar. So it just say it tips over on this side. I'll put the handlebar full lock like that. And then I just pick up using my legs. There are different ways you can do it. And then if you are up a gradient and you have the wheels facing up the hill, you will need to turn the bike right around. When you, <laughs> the very first time it happened, it was an uphill gradient. And I remember I lifted it up and I've, remember just feeling the, the tires just touch the ground and I felt like I was almost there. This is heavy. And then I had to lift everything up again and I did it, but I almost, I almost destroyed myself and I was in the middle of nowhere as well. So it is an extremely top heavy bike and a downfall that you might have heard watching other YouTube videos is the exhaust location. If it drops on the right hand side, you're gonna bend the exhaust pipe into your swing arm via this little bracket here. So you need to remember to always just give it a bit of a rebend, pull it back out a little bit, because otherwise you're gonna gouge a nice big mark into your swing arm and then you'll be up for a whole new piece. They do have high mount exhaust pipes, which I'd highly recommend. I wanna get one for mine. I just haven't found one that I really, I really like yet. Another thing I don't like is that every time you turn the bike off or you start it up again or whatever, the ABS kicks in again. And it might seem like a small thing, ABS. but I'm mentioning it now, but when you head out there and you're going down a hill and then you realize that ABS is still on and you can't stop, yeah, you crap your pants. People have bypassed it, put a relay in, you can bypass the whole thing, have a little switch so it's off all the time until you turn it back on again, which I think is safer, you know, but obviously rules and regulations need it to be on automatically. I'm just gonna move this like this. 
because I think that looks better. Yeah, there we go. So a few other common issues with the T7 is the lack of feel with the rear brakes. So Camel ADV sent me out the, the fix pedal. It sort of it raises the pedal up a little bit and there's not that much movement in the, in the pedal. So you do have a much better feel for the rear brake. You can just pretty much have your big toe on it and just keep tapping out a little bit. The clutch can feel pretty grabby. The friction point's very narrow. Camel ADV have their one finger clutch that I've fit up. It just doesn't grab. It doesn't get the wheel spinning so abruptly or anything. You've got more control, which is what you definitely need. Another issue, not so much with touring. Touring, it's fine, but that's the suspension and how soft it is from stock. So this is still the stock suspension. To give you an idea, like you can sort of, you can see that. And obviously I'm giving it to some, but when you're hitting off road trails and everything, yeah, there's a lot of travel happening. And when you hit a jump, that's gonna bottom out and it's bottomed out on me so many times. So I will be doing the suspension upgrade. Apparently doing the suspension upgrade makes the touring side not so comfortable just because you have stiffer suspension. So just be mindful of that. So who would I recommend this bike to? Would I recommend it to newbies? No, I don't think it's a, a newbie sort of bike. If you're a newbie that's like six foot five and you can handle a bit of a heavy bike on the road, then yeah, it, it could be fine for you. If you're my height or a little bit less, then you're gonna struggle with it. It is, it is big, it feels big especially when you're in the city. So I'd say you'd want to get a couple of years riding something else before having this as your first and only bike. And for everyone else, it really depends on what you want to use it for. If you just want to go on long distance tours with some light off-roading, with some camping gear, and without the hassle of fancy tech, and this bike is great. You can fit different kinds of luggage options and is comfortable to ride for hours at a time. If you have trail bike experience and know how to handle the dirt, then this will take your trail adventures to the next level along with the added benefit of comfort while riding on the tarmac to your destination. For me, I don't know, just seeing how these pros can handle it and seeing these things in action just as a stock bike, just knowing that they have this much potential, that to me is why I'd want to have the T7 and that's why I'm practicing and doing what I'm doing. That's why I've injured myself. It's built to be used that way. It's built to be dropped. It's built for exploration, going on expeditions, loading it up, go camping, do some crazy cool adventures. This bike is capable for all of that. It's a big bike, but there are bigger adventure touring bikes out there. If you have a whole bunch of off-roaded riding skills and you just want to take it to that next level, when you want to go on some bigger adventures, you want to ride just from home, hours away then through some trails and just just keep going yeah absolutely this bike is a hundred percent for you if you have as much experience as me off-road riding then i'd probably suggest getting something you can practice on something that's a bit lighter and that's rich coming from me because i don't i didn't do that <laughs> i love it and then you drop it and you get so fed up after dropping it a few times by yourself you get super tired you get fatigued and you you're pretty much done you're just done i'd highly suggest buying some bars and everything before you head out to the trails because as you can see they do a great job in protecting your plastics and your bike in general. I highly suggest doing an adventure riding course. You meet a whole bunch of people like-minded, make friends, have an absolute ball of a day and you come out with skills that you never think you could ever have, you know. My end goal with this is to be able to load it up with some nice tight packs, minimal kit, and just head out full bush in the middle of Australia and and yeah, have a, have a damn blast. And this bike can do it. I hope this video has been helpful for you. There was a lot to get through. I probably missed some things. There's a lot to talk about with, with this machine. If you have any other questions, drop in the comments below. I'm happy to help out. I hope I shed some light on what this is actually like in the real world, you know, as an average rider with no background in off-road riding. But I also hope I didn't deter you from thinking that you can't ride this, you know. As I mentioned before, it just takes time. You gotta put some practice in, you gotta put some hours in. You're not gonna just hop on this thing and be like the pros that are out there throwing this thing around like it's just the toy. It's a fantastic bike. The more I ride it, the more I love it. I can't wait to get back on it once this is healed up. I'm trying to give my wrist the best chance I can for it to heal. It's getting there. I just want to rest up so I can get, get going on this thing again and start practicing more again. Remember guys, wear all your gear all the time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.